Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. So, um, a couple of videos back I created this um, outdoor sort of plein air palette for nice weather that's coming. And I was thinking, I've got some really lovely watercolour sketchbooks and things like that, but a lot of them have a lot of sort of like you know there's always that pressure to like not to mess things up and things like that and I just wanted a really low pressure easy to use like I don't have to worry about messing it up kind of sketchbook and in combination with all of that um, my daughter is going to be on her school Easter holidays um, probably by the time you see this video she'll be on her Easter will be on her Easter break and she's really into painting at the moment and I obviously want to encourage her creativity and having fun and stuff like that and so there again I have lots of sketchbooks and I could probably pick one out for her but they the you know the ones that I would give her are the ones that I don't want to use myself or the ones that aren't super precious or super expensive because you know she's five um and none of them are really that great paper wise and they're also quite like full as well they have like a lot of paper in them so I wanted something that she you know realistically would be able to fill during her holidays and so it could be like her little Easter holiday memento book. Um, I actually did a separate one, well, I did make one for her already, um, I just painted the cover for her and this is, this has like a mix of different papers in it and I'll show you this as well but um, this one was really easy, I just took a bunch of paper, cut it down to the size I wanted and um, just did a simple sewn stitching down the middle so there's a mix there's some mixed media paper in here and watercolor paper and like you know a few different things that I had and then I added on some ribbon because it doesn't close properly and it has like no painting inside it it's just because the paper's so thick um so I just put some ribbon on it so it can be tied shut um and so this one is just for her to have fun and paint in as well um, but she's also, what she loves to do, she loves swatching colours, which, which is adorable and I love that for her. And so I created her a little swatch book. Um, and so this is actually the one I'm going to do a little tutorial on how to make one of these because I want to make one for myself. And so I just thought I would show you, it's got an elastic to hold it closed. I used duct tape for like the spine binding, I'll show you how I do all of this. And then I've even put in some end paper, which you can also draw on, it's just regular sort of drawing paper. And then what I did was, I, I for her one, I've used mixed media paper because, you know, as much as she loves painting, she also likes colouring with her pens and things like that, so she won't necessarily just be using watercolours in here. But I created her a little swatch book where she can play with colour, and she loves mixing her colours as well, so I thought this would be a really fun way for her to experiment and for us to like play together with colour. And um, so, yeah, I've used tape. And so basically what I've done is I've quote-unquote bound together loose sheets of paper. And so I have a bunch, I have a couple of pads of mixed media paper in a couple of different finishes. Uh, one is more textured, one is more smooth. And I had a couple of A5 pads, and so these are just like single sheets out of that pad that I've bound together to create like a little book for her. And I've just either drawn in or stamped on some different uh, shapes and things that she can color in and play around with. Some color wheels, we can talk about color wheels and stuff like that with her. And like I said, she's really into this sort of thing. And there's a few blank pages at the end of this one as well for her to do what she wants. Um, and yeah, and it's just really fun. And the cover is also watercolour paper on this one, so she can actually, she can paint the cover as well herself This for this one. I didn't, I painted the other one for her, sorry, that was my computer. Um, but she can do this one herself, and I thought it would just be really fun. And it's, I like how this one turned out. It's super simple. Um, there's no sewing involved. There's no, um, you know, you just need tape essentially to be able to do this kind of binding the only I guess downside is you can't do like a double page spread you can't paint across it because you do have the tape in the middle so um, I mean you could you just wouldn't be able to get any paint there um, 
so that's the only thing but I'm planning on using this one for her as a swatch book and the way I did this one it just worked out that way with my paper that the cover is slightly longer or wider than the actual paper inside which is fine it kind of protects the edges a bit more but that's you can obviously trim that down if you want so what I've done for my one I have a bunch and by a bunch I mean a lot and uh, so last year actually no the year before sometime in um, no, it would have been about this time last year, early 2021, I, on Facebook Marketplace, I found a listing where someone was selling basically their entire stash of Saunders Waterford watercolour paper, and they had like these large sheets, and some of it was cut down into quarter sheets, and like full-size sheets, 32 by, well, 30 by 22 inches, I think is the imperial size. And they had literally tons and tons of these that they were getting rid of and I jumped on it and I bought all of it at a massive discount. It would have been, it would, it was something like 15 or 20 percent of how much it would have cost to buy all of that paper brand new. Um, so I have a ton of this paper essentially is what I'm getting at. Um, and so I've taken a few, and some of the sheets, and I can't, it's hard to know until you start painting on them, but some of the sheets, unfortunately, the sizing has gone bad on them, or they've gone a bit splotchy, so I tend to use it, um, at least the batch of sheets that I think have gone bad, I tend to use them mostly for swatching and stuff, and the, the sheets, are, the paper's mostly fine, it's usually around the edges of the sheets where the sizing's gone a bit bad, so they're still perfectly usable, and they'll be great for swatching and for doodling, and again, low stress. <laughs> Low stress painting, which is really the key here and really what I am aiming for with this sort of, I guess, sketchbook of sorts that I'm creating. And um, I might not actually put all these pages in because that, that is quite a lot. I might turn this into two sketchbooks. We'll see. Um, and yeah, so what I've done is I've cut them down, cut down the sheets that I had to A5 size. And there were some offcuts, but whatever you do, if you're cutting down paper, especially cotton paper, don't throw away your offcuts. I keep them in a little pile on the side of my desk, and then if I ever need to swatch colours or test something out before I'm actually painting something, I have all these little offcuts of cotton watercolour paper that I can um, test things out on before I do anything else. So definitely keep those. I've cut them all down to A5 size, so that's roughly, let's see here, that's roughly what... Um, Sorry, uh, like 15 centimeters by 21, I think it is. Yeah, so roughly 15 by 21 centimeters. I'm not sure what that is in inches. Let's see, that's like eight and a quarter inches by just under six, so like six, almost like six by eight, roughly, sort of size. And uh, which, whatever you do, you just wanna make sure it's all the same size. And then I have one sheet here, A4 size sheet, which I folded in half of um, just some cellulose watercolour paper. I'm going to use this as the cover, so it's kind of like a protective cover for the um, for the cotton paper. I'm just going to trim this down, so just use a paper trimmer to cut down my paper. It's a very sort of fast and loose tutorial here today. <laughs> and then I'm also going to put in some coloured paper as kind of like end paper, and I decided to go with a nice bright yellow also matches the duct tape that I'm going to be using. It's really simple binding, you need minimal materials. You don't even really need the duct tape, it's just nice to have and gives a bit of additional reinforcement. Um, and the reason I use the end papers is so that I'm not having to stick the duct tape directly to my cotton paper. It's only going to be on the end papers and the cover paper and on the spine of the book. So how this is all going to work, I'll do the end papers and cover at last. You just kind of get your papers all stacked up neatly into a row and I'm using this rainbow tape. Now you could use washi tape if you wanted, however with watercolour paper washi tape um, in general is is fairly low tack so there's always the risk that the paper the tape could peel off at some point and uh, the papers come loose so this is actually proper tape like actual cellar tape but um, so it's got it's more sticky and it's got um, it just has a rainbow pattern on it I can't remember where I even got this from to be honest I got this years ago and I have a roll of it left 
Um, so I'm just going to be using this to tape my pages together. So you can use whatever tape you'd like. So all I'm going to do, just got a stack of paper there. And because I'm planning on using both sides, I don't really mind which sides. I don't even, at this point, I can't tell which side is which. So I actually just find it easier to do it this way. Just want the pages to butt up against each other. And you're just going to take your tape and somewhat carefully, you can always trim it down, I guess, if it goes over the edge and somewhat straight, hopefully. I, I'm using the cutting mat underneath it as kind of like a guide for my um, making sure everything's lined up. And take that down. Where did I just put my scissors? There they are. And then cut the end here. So that's the first two pages taped together. You bring in the next one and you repeat. You're only going to be able to do this a few times before your stack on one side gets to be too tall. Because, you know, if you're using 300 GSM watercolour paper, it's going to be pretty thick. So I tend to do these in stages. So I'll do four together and then I'll do a, start another four. And if you have any extra tape hanging off the end, you can just trim that off with your scissors. Or you can wait until you've done everything before you do that. Okay, so that's the first four. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna keep repeating this now until I've got all the pages I want taped together. And then I'll, I'm just gonna fast forward this bit and I'll catch up with you guys once I've done that. Hey guys, I uh, quickly wanted to come on and do this voiceover just to let you know that whilst this tape worked really well on the mixed media paper for the book that I made for my daughter, it did not stick well to cotton paper at all. I've experimented with a couple of different tapes since filming this video and um, I found a thinner duct tape type tape which definitely works but it makes the spine extra bulky because obviously duct tape's a lot thicker than regular tape and um but then i found a different kind of masking tape say masking tape washi tape sorry that's a bit stickier than the, the washi tape i regularly use and it's a bit wider so it's about one inch wide washi tape and um that's worked really well so far to hold it together so what i would say is depending on the kind of paper that you're using for your sketchbook if it's cotton um then i would say to experiment a little bit and test it out on some like scrap pieces of the paper that you're planning on using to make sure that the tape is going to hold because what i found was after i made this book and you won't really see it in this video because it wasn't until after i finished filming that i figured it out that in use the tape started peeling up naturally on its own just because it wasn't sticking to the cotton paper that well um whereas uh it was sticking perfectly fine and it's holding up great on the mixed media paper so um like i said just experiment with different tapes and see which one holds best um on whatever paper it is that you're planning on using for your sketchbooks before you <laughs> commit to doing all of it with a tape that doesn't then hold but the process is basically the same you just want to find a tape that's going to be sticky enough to hold your paper um without peeling up all the time all right i'll uh get back let you get back to uh pass me okay so i now have things stacked up into like sets of uh four sheets as it were um i only did that just to make it easier to tape them together and then just make sure you've got them with the taped edges facing each other and you can stack them up because now they're going to be the same level, so it'll be easier to tape um, tape them together to make the overall book. So you're just going to keep doing what you were doing, but with these little groupings now.
like I said, with tape, it's probably not the most ideal with watercolour paper, especially if you're using good quality paper like here. It's, uh, it's probably not the strongest to hold it, but like I said, we're going to reinforce it with the duct tape in a minute. I'm going to stick on the quote unquote end sheets because these books are really thick. I'm just going to put the tape on the paper first. It should stick on this paper pretty well. And then stick it onto the end of the watercolour stack. Do the other side. All right. Okay, so that is all done. So this, I guess, in the book binding terminology, would be referred to as your text block, I guess. And the good thing is, all the pages will lay flat when you open them up, which is kind of the whole point it makes it easier for watercoloring all right so now we're going to bring in the duct tape this is going to be our reinforcement for the spine and for the cover so my book is 21 centimeters long so I'm just going to use my um, uh, what's the word cutting mat here as a guide to measure out my tape there again if it's not exact not the end of the world you can use whatever tape you want you can also use book binding tape if you can get hold of that duct tape where I am is just cheaper so let's just see how wide this spine is this spine is pretty thick um, oh well okay it's about three centimeters so this is a five centimeter piece of duct tape so I think I'm gonna do a few pieces here to really reinforce it so I'm just going to do like a roughly one centimeter on one side and then turn the book over and then pushing down onto the table so it creates a nice flat um, edge against the spine as I roll it up onto the duct tape and then down onto the other side so hopefully that will have gotten all of the spine. But you could get really fancy with this and use glue and all sorts. But like I said, I wanted this to be simple, easy, minimal supplies needed. Just your paper, some cutting supplies. I mean, you don't even need a paper cutter. You can use scissors to cut your paper down to size if you needed to. And um, some tape. I would really recommend duct tape if you can if you can get it just because or some kind of really strong wide tape for this back part just to really get a strong like seal on it and use the water paper cover watercolor paper cover that I cut down to size to um, and, and tape that on and I'm gonna use the duct tape for this I'm gonna use the duct tape on the outside and then I'll also use duct tape on the inside between this end page and the cover to really secure it on. So I think what I'm going to do, just pop the tape onto the paper first. I'm just going to lined up a bit better. There again, a cutting mat is not 100% necessary either. It just can be a bit helpful. Okay. So just popping the book on it. Pulling up the tape, making sure it's nice and flat. And then bringing in the other side of our cover. And taping that down as well. There we go. Feels a lot more secure now. Flipping through the book, and there again, the pages all lay nice and flat. 
I'm just going to go ahead and pop on some duct tape here on these sides just make sure it's nice and secure Okay, there we go. And then you can just decide which side you want to be your front, which side you want to be your back. This side is slightly thicker, it's got more of the tape on the front than this side. Um, but I think I prefer this as the front. So this last step is optional because as you can see the book stays pretty well closed. But I imagine once we start painting in there it might start bulging a little bit, who knows. Um, I have some elastic cord, you can use whatever you have. You can also use ribbons if you wanted to, to like create a tie around the middle. Um, so you can either decide if you want it to go around the middle of the book, which you then pull up and stuff, or like I did for my daughter's one, you can have it go long ways round and then you take it off like that and it just sits on the back. And I'm going to do mine the same as hers because She'll ask me why I didn't do it like that if I if I do anything else. So all I do just wrap it around the book. You want to make sure it's nice and tight, but not too tight so that it starts like digging into your pages. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to do on your own. If you have someone else handy to be able to stick a finger down so you can get a nice tight knot. That'd be really helpful. Okay, that's pretty good. Then you can trim that down. And then just move the knot roughly into the middle. And then just to secure it in place, I'm just going to use a bit of duct tape. Because why not? I guess if you wanted to do it lengthwise, you could have taped it into the spine to keep it secure. But that is obviously, you can do whatever you want with this book. It's your book. I've watched a bunch of different tutorials on book binding, simple book binding, no so book binding, but a lot of them still used tools and supplies that I just didn't have on hand and I didn't want to go buying a bunch of stuff. The only thing I bought for this project was duct tape. So I had everything else on hand. I even have some like a really cheap set of book binding material so I could do a sewn binding if I wanted to. But like I said, I wanted it to be easy and low pressure. Um, I didn't want to spend hours sewing the spine together. And this is so like, it looks really neat. I mean, just ignore <laughs> the bits of tape poking out, but it looks really good. I really like it. Um, got my daughter's one, got my one. Um, really happy with how these have turned out. And yeah, I'll be back to show you how I use it. I'll probably um, do a little flip through once it's full. I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get a few paintings done over the Easter holidays and into the summer months. And yeah, like I said, it's a low, low stress, easy, fun thing to play around with. So I hope you found this useful. If you do give this a go, let me know how you find it. Um, let me know, uh, have you tried this type of bookbinding before? I haven't seen a tutorial on YouTube on this particular method. I might have just missed it. I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of this. But I'd be really curious as to what you think. Um, have you tried bookbinding of any kind before? I've tried a Coptic, Coptic stitch binding before, which was fun, but very time consuming. Um, I've tried the saddle stitch binding, which I did one version of in this little book that I did for my daughter. And now I've done this method with tape, which by far, hands down, has been the quickest and the easiest method um, 
that doesn't require a lot of tools. I think that's the other thing. I just cleared a bit of space on my desk and since I'm planning on using this little sketchbook with this palette of paints, why not use this to create a fun little cover? I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna paint. I'm probably just gonna do something a bit on the abstract side of things. So let's just plop some water onto the cover. Actually, what I'm gonna do, I've just got a sheet of paper here, just to protect the inner pages because I'm probably gonna make a bit of a mess. I'm just putting some clean water down. And bear in mind the cover is just some cellulose paper, so it's not cotton paper. It's not gonna behave the same as cotton paper does. Okay. Okay, I think this is dry now. Uh, looks mostly dry. Whilst I was waiting for this to dry, I just thought, hey, why not? Let's just do a little um, swatching rainbow, as I call it, of all the colours in the palette. This is just some of the scrap paper I had from um, creating the watercolour sketchbook. As you can see, the, the sizing in this in the scrap pieces seem to be fine. There's no weird textures coming through it kind of creates this weird mottled texture when the sizing has gone bad so it's just a bit hit and miss with the paper unfortunately in terms of how um, how how it's going to react how the sizing is okay so this is what it looks like all the paints all the colors appear to have had some kind of reaction which is awesome I'm just going to brush off all the salt so I don't know if you can see the salt crystals it's just regular table salt I'm gonna brush it off. You really wanna make sure that your paints are dry before you do this so you don't um, smear anything. And that's my finished cover. I might stamp something on it as well, like, um, what, what, was they, how, what was they calling this? Like a stress-free, uh, or maybe I might call this my no pressure sketchbook and just stamp on no pressure. <laughs> Um, on the cover and just as like a reminder to myself whenever I pick it up that there's no pressure with this one It is just meant to be fun and relaxing. I hope you enjoyed The book making I hope you'll give it a go. Let me know if you do try it out Like I said, you can experiment with what kind of tape you use for binding the pages if I ideally and I don't know if it exists, but thin duct tape would be great. <laughs> like even if it's a bit thicker than this, it'd be fine. But the duct tape I have is just super thick. It's five centimeters. It's like two inches wide. If there was like a one inch duct tape, that'd be great. I would gladly use that to bind the pages together because it's a lot more sturdy, very sticky tape. Um, unlike with most things with watercolor, you want a high tack tape, high tack tape words to um, stick those pages together as securely as possible. But like I said, you can make it work with less secure tape. I just would maybe be a bit cautious about using washi tape unless you try it out and see how it works. It might hold better, who knows. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm rambling now. I'm gonna go. See you all later. Hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.